All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, this is going to be my second video today. So in the first video, I talked about uh, how there will not be sex in the life to come hereafter. All right, and uh, just to show you a couple of verses here um, in Jude. It says how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. And that's what we see today more than ever. I mean, it's unbelievable how obvious these guys are, how much they stick out, and how subtle they try to be, like they're going to fool somebody. Well, you got to understand, I think, that these people have been fooled. It's not like they know the truth and they're deliberately lying they don't care about the truth they've been lied to and they've wanted to believe the lie and then in turn they teach these lies to your children your neighbors your friends your family and the world is full of corruption okay in first John chapter 2 it clearly says the world passes away and the lust thereof all right if you you know put your brain cells together you can realize that this hey the lust the sex that's in this world it's gonna pass away right? the world's gonna pass away all right therefore John writes to us and he says love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the Father is not in him for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father but is of the world and the world passes away and the lust thereof but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever so I want to use that as my premise for picking on this lady or woman whatever you want to call her this woman right here uh, She's going to teach from inside of her car the Word of God. And so let's give her a chance and listen to what she says. So after the rapture, after the great tribulation, Jesus is going to come down with the saints, those who are raptured or were believers that got raised from the dead. And they're going to reign for a thousand years and establish God's kingdom. Those who became believers during the Great Tribulation are still going to have their mortal bodies. So they're still going to have... Alright, so <clears throat> I, gotta, I gotta stop it here and highlight what she just said. Well, what... I can, I can, uh, okay, so... And they're gonna reign for a thousand years in a step. This is after... The rapture, okay? Jesus is going to come down with the saints, those who were raptured. Or were believers that got raised from the dead and they're going to reign for a thousand years and establish God's kingdom. Those who became believers during the Great Tribulation are still going to have their mortal bodies. They're still going to have sin nature after Jesus returns. According to this woman. Sin nature, and they're still going to eventually die, but they're going to live for much longer lives. Yeah, there we go. They're still going to die. They're going to have much longer lives, but they're still going to die after Jesus returns. So, in other words, you can just throw out your Bible. It's a, worthless. And we can put all of our, fo our, our, our hope and our faith in this woman right here. Because she knows better than God Almighty. See, God didn't understand, right? This young woman, she knows it all. Alright. 
It's interesting, though. If you read Isaiah 29, surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For the shall the work say of him that made it, he may be not. Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he had no understanding. See, God doesn't understand. And that's the only way you can squiggle wiggle your way out of this is to say that God does not understand. All right? That's the only way. It's the only way. Now, of course, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you don't know what the Bible says. All right. So, let me... I want her to finish what she's going to say here. Real quickly. Oh, that's what's this here? Hmm. Huh. We're, we're going to get into that. Like those who live to a hundred are going to be like an infant. But those who were yeah, taken they're going to be the... little babies, and they're going to poop their pants. And uh, you know, they're going to do baby stuff. Way, 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 way. For a hundred years. Way, 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 way. You know, little babies. Little babies for a hundred years. And it's clear to me that. <laughs> you're not even paying attention to what the Bible says. Honestly. Oh, here in Isaiah 65, it talks about there shall be no more an infinite days. Uh, compare that with what she says here. Can we go back? What would she say this? Right there. Much longer lives. Like those who live to a hundred are going to be like an infant. They're going to be like an infant. There shall be no more than an infant of days. It is, to me, I would be embarrassed beyond belief. Not just because of this mistake that she made, but because of what she says after it. Alright, so in verse 20, it says, There shall be no more an infant of days, nor an old man that has not filled his days, for the child shall be a hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. Alright, so, well, how do you, under, how do you explain this? Well, you know, we that are born of God, we are the children of God. Even if we're a hundred years old, we are still a child of God. Jesus even says, um, except you come to me as children, Oh, what's he say here? Uh-oh. Hold on a second. Oh. oh and except you come to me. Except you come to me as a child. Except you be converted and become as little children. Except you be converted... All right, you know what that means, right? So when you're converted, that means you're born of the Spirit of God. You're saved, sealed, secured, sanctified forever. Therefore, you become as a little child. When you are converted, when you are saved, when you are born of the Spirit of God. All right? 
it's not rocket science, man. So, if you're a hundred years old, and you are a saved person, then you are a hundred year old child of God. Except you be converted and become as little children. All right, but the sinner, <clears throat> who's the same age as you, the sinner that's the same age as you that doesn't believe, well, he's accursed. And if he don't be converted, then he will not be saved. This is not rocket science, man. What do you think? There's going to be little infants living for a hundred years and pooping their diapers and spitting all over themselves, puking, farting, burping for a hundred years? Is that what you thought? But those who were taken in the rapture are going to have their immortal bodies. And those who are raised from the dead are going to also have their glorified bodies. So they won't be able to die and won't have their sin nature. Those who are in their mortal bodies are going to repopulate the earth. There it is. You got glorified bodies living among people in their mortal bodies. You got the immortals living with the mortals. And it's interesting. She says, if you're immortal, you won't be able to die. Why would you want to die? Even now. But after Jesus comes, this woman claims that people in their mortal bodies are going to repopulate the earth. And then their children are going to have to decide living and reigning with Jesus and seeing him to still repent and believe or they're going to be ungrateful that they were born in in that era and choose to want to rebel against God so after the thousand years Satan is going to be let loose all right so Uh, this is just saying to hell with anything the Bible says. I'm going to create my own religion. I'm going to push this idea that is contrary to the Word of God. And everything I'm going to teach is going to be the exact opposite of what the Word of God says. Now, of course, if you don't know what the Bible says, this could fool you, right? I mean, it sounds like it's Bible stuff. But it's actually the exact opposite of what the Bible says. And then their children are going to have to decide living and reigning with Jesus and seeing him to still repent and believe or they're going to be ungrateful that they were born in, in that era and choose to want to rebel against God. So after the thousand years, Satan is going to be let loose for one more short season and deceive those who were wanting to rebel against God and were ungrateful or like be deceived by Satan. And then God is going to then cast Satan into the lake of fire along with those that chose him. Now, while I was reading this part of Revelation, I was like, why would God want Satan to be released after we just spent a thousand years of, like, peace, abundance, and prosperity? Those who are born during the millennial reign will still have to make the choice. And since they'll still have their sin nature, they'll still be able to be deceived by Satan. But those who have their glorified bodies will not be able to be deceived by Satan. 
Anyways, that's just what I think. So it's better to believe now in Jesus and repent now than to repent during the Great Tribulation so that you have your glorified body and won't have your sin nature anymore. Anyways, I think a lot of people focus on the rapture and then, you know, like the apocalypse, Great Tribulation, but there's a lot to look forward to still. The millennial reign is going to be amazing. If you enjoyed this video, it's going to be amazing. Well, not really. I mean, not at all. I mean, it's going to downright suck. I don't care about a no what what a bonus thousand years of death and misery suffering and torment for another thousand years I don't want nothing to do with that at all amazing amazing if you're the devil <laughs> What in the world? I it's look, I know there's a brain in there. I know there is. Well why doesn't this woman use it? Well, I guess it's the same reason why most people don't use it. They they don't want to think. This to hell with the uh, simple logic, common sense. They're just repeating what they heard. That's all they're doing. You know, this looks like a human, but it acts like a parrot. That's the world that we're in today. There are a lot of people out there that look like they're humans, but all they really are are parrots. Now, <laughs> wow. I, I want I want to show something to you. That's this idea that there's gonna be a time period where people are going to be okay. So let me set up the stage for you. There's, Jesus comes down according to them. Jesus comes on the earth, and they will have another opportunity to be persuaded and to believe in him. That's what they're saying, right? Now... I feel like this is important. Where am I at here? There it is. There it is. Let me go over this story in Luke chapter 16 about the rich man and the beggar named Lazarus. Let me walk you through this and then remember what she said and know that most people are teaching this. I mean, she didn't figure this out on her own. She heard somebody. Her probably her favorite 19-year-old snot-nosed pastor probably told her about this. And she believed it. That's what I think. It's not from the Bible. Not even close. And the Bible refutes this theory that she's laying out. And it, But the thing is, man, this theory, this thing, this teaching that she has, it's not her own. Man, this is what 99.9% .9 of the preachers that stand behind a pulpit in front of a congregation teach today. It's sickness. Now, let's walk through this. There was a certain man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. 
Sumptuous. Sumptuously. He looked a he good looking guy. Right. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. Raz, Lazarus. Which was laid at his gate full of sores. This guy was ugly. Okay. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus, Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldst send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Let me read that again. And he said, Nay, Father, but if one of if one went from them, I'm sorry, let me try this one more time. But if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded though one rose from the dead. Did you know that Jesus Christ rose from the dead? Moses and the prophets are not enough to persuade these fellas. And Neither is the Lord Jesus Christ enough to persuade these people. Now, think about this. If those people, they have everything they need right now to be persuaded and they still refuse they still reject this scenario does not square with what this woman teaches think about this Jesus has already risen from the dead That's, that's not enough for these people. Moses and the prophets, they, right now, they can hear them. But they don't want to. So, 
this idea of a thousand bonus years one last opportunity does not make any sense does not square with what we're reading here in Luke 16 they have everything right now that they could possibly ask for and they reject it now there's no reason why they would accept it later I hope I really hope uh, somebody gets it right I mean it's it's not rocket science all right so consider this all right, so she wants to say that uh, <laughs> I, I can't even begin to understand what these people are teaching I really can't because what happens if you're unsaved right now do you die when Jesus comes if so how are there I mean who are the mortals You, I'm, it, to me it sounds like you're saying that there are going to be immortals and living with mortals are the mortals are they all unsaved and what happens if they repent and they turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and they believe on him do they automatically get resurrected and changed into immortal You see what I'm saying? Or do they gotta wait till after the end of a thousand years? When I guess there's another resurrection of the body of Christ? Like a third resurrection or something? I don't get it, man. I I can't understand it. I can't even begin to understand what these people are teaching I can't if we read 1st Corinthians 15 it talks about the resurrection it talks a lot about the resurrection and not just the resurrection but of course the end of the world now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead but if there be no resurrection of the dead then Christ is not risen see the little dispute here about is there a resurrection? Is there not a res resurrection? Of course there's a resurrection. And if Christ be not risen, then our pre preaching is in vain. And your faith also in vain. Right? Yeah, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up. If so be that, the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain. Your faith is vain. You are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable we are of all men most miserable miserable but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept for since by man came death by man came also the resurrection of the dead 
For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all will be made alive. But every man in his own order. Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then comes the end. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. And the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he has put all things under his feet, but when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. All right, so if this helps you, let me just explain it this way, that Jesus is God Almighty. We need a Savior, right? But when the Savior comes and we are transformed into our glorified bodies and this world comes to an end, we no longer have a need for a savior because we are already changed into our glorified bodies in other words there are no more people that need to be saved okay so that destroys if you understand that it destroys the idea of a thousand years of people still needing to be saved. It just does not even, what these people teach does not even begin to make any sense. And so you've heard me uh, say this a few times here now that those of us that are saved, that believe the Bible that we hold in our hands, those of us that are born of the, of the Spirit of God, we have advantage over those who are not born of God because our eyes are open. Our ears can hear. And we can understand and know the truth, the Word of God. And so... Uh, this is a great way to demonstrate that, really, to show people, hey, the end of this world is coming. Your only opportunity to get saved is right now. If Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's too late. Don't listen to these liars. They're lying and deceiving and teaching something that is extremely cruel and wicked. Nobody can get saved after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Your only opportunity is right now. All right, where was I at here? So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption and it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor and it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown in the natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. 
Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold. I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality so when this corruptible shall put on incorruption and this mortal shall put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory O oh, death where is thy steam? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as we know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. All right, so we notice and this is already written in Isaiah 25, right? If I already showed you this, I apologize, but I just want to go over this again. In Isaiah 25, we have it written right here. Uh, this is again is speaking of the judgment of God, the great day of the Lord. This is prophesied all throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, the end of the world. All right. Now, here in Isaiah 25, it says, He will swallow up death and victory. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces. And the rebuke of his people shall be shall he take away from off all the earth, for the Lord has spoken it. Alright, this is clearly a reference to the end of the world. Alright? end of the world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven see right here in verse 52 it says in a moment in the twinkling of night the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible all right this is prophesied all throughout the Bible Daniel talked about it he says in verse 2 he says Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. It's the great day of the Lord. It's the end of the world. In Matthew 24, Jesus is asked specifically, What is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? 
And at the end of the world is when he comes in the clouds of heaven. He says, The sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the Son of the Son of Man in heaven, that's Jesus, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Mourn. They're all going to mourn. Because they know it's the end of the world. And their opportunity to be saved is gone. They're going to know it. And your words can't wiggle out of it. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Great sound of a trumpet. At the last trump, or the trump, for the trumpet shall sound. This is all speaking of the same moment in time. Right, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Just like what we read in Daniel 12, verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. This is at the end of the world with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, incorruptible. It's the end of the world. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world. And when the world passes away, so also do the lust of the world pass away. Right? right? You understand that, right? The sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. You understand that, right? It's not, ro it's not rocket science. You know, it's, it's pretty simple stuff, right? When Jesus comes in the clouds, every eye shall see him. They also which pierced him. That means those guys that stuck their spears into his side and blood and water came flowing out of them. Those people are going to see Jesus coming in the clouds. Behold, he comes with clouds. Every eye shall see him. Even those dead d guys. Those dead guys that actually physically killed him. When he was on the, the earth. In our flesh. The guys that stuck him. They're going to see him. How are they going to see him? They died a long time ago. Well, Daniel 2 just told us, man, this is evident all throughout the Bible. It's Judgment Day. It's the great day of the Lord. Everybody is going to stand before God and see God. Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. So when Jesus comes, everybody, the living and the dead, are going to see him. Right? It even says, first the dead in Christ shall rise first. Right? 
and then we which are in Christ that are alive and remain that's what the and remain means and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds behold he comes with clouds and every eye shall see him see we're going to be lifted up but those bozos are going to still be on the ground and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him all the tribes of the earth shall mourn because of him they know it's the end of the world it's coming it comes it happens and it's going to be too late when Jesus comes it's the end of the world everybody's going to know it every creature is going to know it every creature dog cat squirrel bird humans we are all created by God to know that this day is coming just like God has instinctively made cats to jump into a litter box and to do their little you know poopy do they know they instinctively know to poop in a litter box it's incredible it's amazing that's how God has made everything to instinctively know things and so also has God made every living creature to know that when he comes in the clouds of heaven it's the end of the world he made you and he made you to instinctively know that it's the end of the world and people are gonna realize this when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven they're gonna realize this and they're gonna freak out and they're gonna have heart attacks because they know it's the end of the world men's hearts failing them for fear because they know it's the end of the world and when it's the end it's the end that's it there is no more death after the judgment of God that's it it's all over there is no more death it's the end see it is appointed unto men once to die and then after this the judgment the judgment is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven when he comes we are all resurrected all right those of us that are God's elect we are lifted up into the air we are changed transformed into our immortal bodies those that are not saved those that are not God's elect they're in big trouble and they can't get out of it and that's why it's so important today to teach the truth that when Jesus comes it's too late their opportunity your opportunity if you're not saved right now is 
right now. If you put it off another minute, another second, man, it could be too late. You can't sneak in the last second. Oh, there's Jesus. I get, Oh, I believe. I believe. No, it's too late. It's too late. You can't and you won't be able to pull off the last second switch. Your opportunity to pull off a last second switch is right now.